that you all are here. There are, uh, there are a couple of chairs over here. I don't know how well you'll see, but there are a couple of seats over here and a couple over here, soft seating that you might enjoy. But Alice Lunyakova barely missed being a citizen of Czechoslovakia. She was born just six weeks after the formation of the Czech Republic. So you can tell how old she is if you know when that <laughs> happened. Alice made her appearance in Chesky Broad, a small town of about 6,500. But she actually moved to Prague when she was one, so she really doesn't remember that small town very much. Miss Lunyakova graduated this summer from Masaryk University in Brno. Masaryk is, for those of you not familiar with it, the second largest university in the country with about 35,000 students. She majored in linguistics, English, and French with the Faculty of Education and wrote her thesis, The History of the Czech Immigration to Texas in the 19th Century in English. I would hate to write my thesis in Czech. <laughs> Our speaker became interested in the topic when she studied at McLennan Community College. She applied for the Masaryk uh, MCC exchange program because she wanted to experience American culture and language. Since 1998, if you can believe it, MCC has invited two Czech students to study each semester. And Alice was chosen from among the many applicants in the fall of 2014. Ms. Lunyakova returned to Waco last summer to research Czech culture and heritage in Texas and to assist the Keston Center with processing and translating Czech language materials. She notes that when defending her thesis, the committee, and there, each thesis committee has an opponent who is supposed to question you thoroughly. Which, I'm glad we don't have that here. <laughs> but it took them about five or six times longer than average to talk with her. And that's not a bad thing. It simply means they were very interested in her subject. During her visit to the United States this summer, she has spoken in Temple, LaGrange, Houston, and College Station, yes, to the A, and will make a presentation Thursday at the New West Middle School. Currently, Alice teaches French and English while working on her next degree. Her ultimate career goal involves Czech diplomacy with the United States, especially Texas, and I think she's already well on her way. Alice Lenyukova. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Kathy, for a nice introduction. I'm very happy to see you all here. I, uh, as you can see, I'm quite nervous. I really didn't expect this attendance. Um, I'm so happy, really. It means a lot to me. So thanks, thank you very much. So today, uh, I would like to share with you my Texas story. And, as Kathy already uh, said, I would like to uh, share uh, with you um, my, or I would like to show you my thesis. The thesis is right here, this nice red uh, book. Uh, 90 pages, 70 pages of text, um, 20 pages of pictures, and please, I really hope that uh, you have brought a lot of money because <laughs> I have just this one piece this is really a, a unique piece so at the end of the presentation there is going to be an auction <laughs> okay that was a joke of course <laughs> if you survive my presentation at the end I will tell you where you can find it and uh, where and you can download it for free and you can read it at home. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, just the lucky people <laughs> can see this screen. I'm really sorry for you guys, but um, you will have to imagine <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm talking about. So as you can see the title, 
of my thesis is the uh, history of Czech immigration to Texas in the 19th century. Quite academic, I know, quite long. So, and we can call it, uh, unfamiliarly, uh, how Kolache came to Texas. Oh. Yes. You, all of you, <laughs> you love Kolache, you eat Kolache, that's, that's correct. But maybe you don't even know why they are here, you know, who started. So I will tell you today. All right, but for the beginning, I would like to show you a picture uh, from my graduation ceremony in Brno. By the way, the person on the left, it's not my sister, it's my mother. Yeah, she looks quite good, doesn't she? <laughs> Unfortunately, she can't be here right now. I, I'm afraid she's sleeping because she's back in the Czech Republic and there is almost 11 p.m. But she thinks uh, on me. Yeah, and the blue diploma that I'm holding in my hands, uh, that wasn't quite easy to get the diploma, by the way. But uh, one of the steps was to write a thesis. And guess what? I wrote about Czech migration. Yeah. So, I, I was talking, um, or Kathy um, said to you that I'm from Prague. This is Prague. Quite beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the most beautiful city in the world. But, I studied in Brno which is less beautiful, but still it's quite beautiful. I really like Brno. And in Brno, everything started because uh, thanks to my university, I could come uh, to Waco two years ago. Yeah, this picture was taken two years ago in front of uh, Mackinac Community College, uh, where I could study thanks to presidential scholarship. And thanks also to Dr. McCown that is here today with us. Uh, and the, by the time the picture was taken, I had no idea that there were some Czech communities, Czech descendants, or like that there is a history of Czech people who came here. Because we don't know about this story in the Czech Republic. I don't know why, but no one, no one uh, tells us. At school, we don't learn about it. I'm quite a good student. I think I would have remembered if someone had told me about it. So by the, by the time the picture was taken, I had no idea until these Czech communities, until I tasted kolache. In West, this picture is taken in a village bakery in West. Uh, some people here in the room know the person on the left. Her name is Marquera, and that was my great friend. Uh, she studied here as well, because there are always two Czech, Czech students who are sent to uh, Mekaran Community College. So as you can see uh, in the picture, we are enjoying Kolach. That was uh, on West Fest. Yes. And I was... You know, you know, you when you don't know what to do in the evening, you just go uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So yesterday evening, you know, evening before my presentation, I was on my Facebook, and I just realized that I actually wrote a status about Westfest exactly two years ago. What a coincidence! It's really exactly two years ago, 30 August 2014. And I wrote, I, I have to move a little bit. <laughs> I went to Westfest today and I have never been more proud of my country. The Czechs came to West in 1880s. By the way, this information I found on Wikipedia by the time. Because <laughs> I just didn't know anything. Okay. The Czechs came to West in 1880s to purchase the rich lands to farm and start a fresh life in the new world. Today, it is more than 130 years, but the Czech traditions are still kept here and you can taste the Czech food or just speak Czech with someone. 
That is amazing. I am so happy since I come from the small and not very famous country, but I discovered the Czech town in the US. So that is what I wrote and I had no idea how far everything uh, would come that finally I will do presentation at Bell University two years after. Yes, so uh, now a little bit of linguistic lesson. I am teacher. My friends tell me this all the time that even though I, I wouldn't study Faculty of Education, I would be teacher because I like correcting people. <laughs> yeah. So, please, the word collage, the Czech word collage, that's written like that, uh, with, the, with the weird accents for you. <laughs> yes, I wrote the phonetical transcription for you, guys, okay? So, collage. It's not collage, collage. It's like long. And that's single, all right? But we have problem apparently with making plural. So, plural of collage, that's collage. And you say collages or collages, or I don't know. <laughs> Okay, guys, that is not correct. <laughs> so please, uh, I would like to teach you something today. So kolače, that's plural. Uh huh. So let's eat kolače. Yes. But what is kolač for me? Kolač for me, like for girl from Prague, it's something like that. It's it's bigger, definitely than kolače you eat here. So that's the thing I am sometimes confused by. Like, collage, okay, but then you bring something, um, something smaller. <laughs> and I personally, I would call this collage in Texas collage key. Yes, <laughs> that's it, a new, new information for you. Yeah, collage key, that means actually small collage. <laughs> so now, <laughs> you will uh, share this information with your friends. <laughs> Let's eat collage key. Mm -hmm. No one will understand you, but it will be correct. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I, I mentioned there, why do we call it collage or collage key? Because kolo in Czech, language means wheel. We are quite clever Czech people. <laughs> so actually we eat uh, small wheels. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like languages. So I like speaking about linguistics. Um, so maybe I will disappoint some of you. I will not tell you secret uh, recipe. Uh, res recipe or receipt? <laughs> recipe. <laughs> right, recipe. For uh, kolače, I'm not a very good cook actually. I can cook like five food, but that's fine, you know. Like I have time to learn it. Uh, but but at least I can teach you how to pronounce it, <laughs> which is also important. Okay, so uh, but now more seriously, how or why kolače came here? So of course people brought kolače here and Czech people brought kolače here because now you know after this is my third time in Texas and now I really I can say that I understand why Czech people brought kolače here you know um, when you are from the Czech Republic and you came to Texas uh, maybe the very first weeks uh, you are quite shocked by everything here it's I would call it something like culture, cultural shock. Number one, public transportation. But <laughs> maybe that would be topic for another presentation. Uh, so Czech people wanted to eat food they like it. So 
when they came here, they just wanted to bake what they like. So that's the reason why collage started to uh, start uh, appeared here. Yeah. So now a little bit of history lesson. Uh, I don't know how many people here know where the Czech Republic is. This is my, you know, when I travel and people ask me where I'm from uh, and I say I'm from the Czech Republic, they ask me like, is it in Europe? Oh <laughs> uh, yes, it's in Europe, please. So, but, quite sad story. Uh, Czech Republic didn't exist until 1993 and in the 19th century we were part of Austria-Hungary Empire which wasn't fun at all. For example, the official language was German. No, we are Czechs, we want to speak Czech. So, yeah, the situation wasn't really good and some people uh, were brave enough to leave everything behind and just went to America. Uh, yeah, this is a map of Austria-Hungary Empire. As you can see, it was cr uh, quite big. Uh, maybe you can't see it. This is Czech Republic, the small part on the north of Austria-Hungary uh, Empire. Yeah, th that wasn't really fair, you know. Actually, we wanted that is. Austria-Hungary Czech Empire because at the beginning it was just Austrian Empire and then Hungarians people came and hey we wanted it it's called Austria-Hungary Empire so Czech people came and said yeah what if we wanted it's called Austria-Hungary Czech Empire but they said no <coughs> that's not fair <laughs> so we were part of Austria-Hungary Empire unfortunately until 1918 and uh, if we ask when uh, Czech migration started, when Kolaje came, we would say uh, after 1848, which is connected with, um, with the fact that administration procedure of getting permission to leave became easier. So basically we can say if you fulfilled your uh, military service for two years, you could leave. <laughs> but it wasn't so easy. Uh, there were more conditions and you had to have money for buying tickets. I will talk about it later. Uh, the peak of the immigration, it's 1880s. So if there are some Czech descendants today, which I hope, maybe your great-grandparents came uh, in 1880s, 1890s. That's the most typical uh, year or decades for, for coming here, like for Czech people to come here. And then I uh, would like to also mention that many people came at the beginning of 20th century. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. By the way, um, this is all the time, this competition, it's not just presentation, <coughs> I'm counting points. Uh, depending on your reaction. <laughs> and now we have actually a question. So, any idea uh, why uh, Czech people or why would come in the 20th century? It's connected with one event. Yes? Excellent! 10 points. <laughs> so, yes, it's connected with World War One. that it uh, encouraged many people, or like they didn't want to be in Europe. Okay, uh, how many? This is very interesting question, <laughs> but we don't know. That's a bad thing. Uh, why we don't know? Because you know, 19th century there weren't any computers, there weren't any technologies where they, you know, could put um, uh, some data or how to call it statistics. So, um, many people left, but no one has actually recorded. So that's the, uh, that's the problem. We can't really say how many people. Yeah, impossible to establish, we can say. Uh, which is connected with one thing, 
uh, many people, when they were leaving Austria-Hungary Empire, they kept their um, Austrian citizenship. Because they were like, maybe it's not going to be so good in America, so maybe we would like to come back. Well, actually, it was good in America. So they decided to stay. But the problem was that in the statistics, they were still like that they live in Austria-Hungary, that they are just on holiday somewhere in America, which was nonsense. So that makes many discrepancies in the statistics. Uh, yeah, When I was doing the research, I discovered two authors that made the statistics, Kutnar and Polishensky. And these two guys don't have the same numbers, which is interesting, so I don't know where they uh, where they took them. Uh, but meanwhile, um, Kutnar claims that 19,932 Czech, Czechs left during uh, 1850 uh, to 1859. Polishensky claims the number 23,009. I know that he put there also year 1960. But still, it's not really probable that more than 4,000 people would have left during just one year. So the numbers are really uh, not reliable. But this is just like for giving general um, idea how many people left. Yeah, these are the statistics. That's from Polishensky. As you can see, uh, 90, yeah, the beginning of the 20th century, almost 100,000 people. Can you imagine that? I can't. That's like a one town in the Czech Republic. That's really a lot. So it just shows how important the Czech immigration was. That it wasn't just you know few people who brought here Kolache. That was really the whole villages, and uh, it just shows that people weren't satisfied in the empire. There was something wrong, and they wanted to change it. Uh, four villages of origin. This is very interesting for me. Uh, the author of this, of this book, or where I found this information, Arnold Plaha, so he mentions these four villages. Lanchkron, Sadverice, Setin and Frenchtown. But he puts more towns and villages to each of the village. And this is really interesting. For example, he put, uh, he put Ostrava to Frenchtown. But I don't really understand because Ostrava is not a village at all. <laughs> Ostrava is actually the third biggest town in the Czech Republic. So, you, do, you can't believe everything what's in the book. Uh, but maybe the, the whole problem is that I don't really understand what he means by village. Maybe it's just like some term that I don't understand. Like, I mean what village, I know what village is, but maybe he means something different. But if you, uh, if you ever ask your great grandparents or grandparents from where they came, they would have probably mentioned uh, these areas. All these areas, instead of Lanchkron, are in Moravia. This is very interesting because I'm from Prague and that's Bohemia part. And there is a rivalry between Prague and Brno. People in Brno always mock me. What are you doing here? You should be in Prague, because everything is better in Prague, right? Um, so I would like to just say that there were also people from Bohemia who came to Texas, not only from Moravia. The good example is Lanchko. Yeah, There are more uh, villages and towns, but uh, I will not mention everything. You can find it in the thesis. So now you, everybody wants to read it, right? <laughs> uh, this is the map, which is not probably you can't see. You can't see it. Uh, it's just a map of uh, Czech Republic, 
and uh, yeah, here are the areas. Lunch crowd is here. Yeah, this is Bohemia. This is Moravia. Okay, so ju I just wanted to show you that lunch crowd is really in Bohemia. Okay, let's move. Uh, where? Uh, so this is interesting. I actually found out that Czech people followed Germans in Texas. You know, relationship between Czech people and Germans are not uh, are sometimes descri described as like complicated. Well, apparently not in Texas, <laughs> because guess what? Czech people came here in the 19th century, and they just said, "Okay, so we will go where the Germans are." Uh, why? What do you think? Why would Czech people, when they left, you know, the Austria-Hungary oppression? Why would they want it to be with Germans again? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it does. So first of all, their mentalities were similar. As I said, do you remember a while ago I mentioned something like cultural shock? Um, yeah, you have similar mentalities with people from Europe than from America. I mean, like when you come here from the Czech Republic, you would suddenly realize how similar you are with German. This is really interesting. Uh, so their mentalities were similar. And one thing also important, the language. Guess what? People in the 19th century couldn't speak English very well. But they could speak German, because as I said, it was official language of Austria-Hungary Empire. So, and when you go, when you uh, come to a new country, you are so happy when you find someone who speaks your language. Trust me, I know something about it. <laughs> I know something about language barrier also. So, uh, they just wanted to be together with Germans because they speak the same language, they spoke the same language. Yeah, so that's the reason. Uh, and good example of this peaceful coexistence is Cat Spring. I am sure you heard about it. Uh, Arnold Bergman came to Cat Spring. Arnold Bergman was one of the first pioneers who decided to leave Czech lands. Cat Spring, yeah, in Austin County. This is a map of Texas. Uh, in Austin County, uh, Austin, Cat Spring is here, the red part. Maybe this map is better. Settling areas in Texas. So, logically, People came through Galveston, so they uh, decided to uh, settle quite close uh, to Galveston because they didn't want to travel, you know, so far somewhere. Um, and they uh, settled or they founded uh, some towns, uh, for example, Praha. That was really interesting. I was there last year. I was in Praha, but very different from what I know. <laughs> um, but it was amazing to be there, that people, that it just shows that people wanted to actually uh, transport their homeland, so they built a town called Praha in Texas. This is really so nice. I, um, I appreciate that their ideas. <laughs> let's build a town and let's call it Praha. <laughs> Okay, yeah, or Friedek, Hostin, I'm sure you've heard about it, that's all Czech. Yeah, so as I said, they were uh, close to Galveston. They didn't want to go far. Who? So, okay, we can say farmers or peasants. We can say peasants. But peasants were classified into three subclasses. Uh, farmers, cottagers, and laborers. And now I have a question for you. Who do you think that from among these three groups who enjoyed the high social status? Farmers, cottagers, or laborers? Uh -huh. So farmers or cottagers? <laughs> farmers. Farmers, mm -hmm. because farmers, they actually uh, give uh, work to cottagers or to laborers. I will explain, yeah, answer farmers. 
I will explain. Because the, why do we call them cottagers? Because um, cottage is um, kalupa in Czech. It's a, like a house where you can uh, live. So cottagers, they owned but at least the house. They didn't have any land, but they had the house. Laborers, they had nothing. They just worked. And farmers, they had everything. House, land, they were quite okay. So cottagers could sell the house and guess what? Buy the ticket to go to America. So if you ask who left, like the, the, the majority, who was the majority? Cottagers. Uh, because they could sell the house. Laborers couldn't sell anything, so laborers didn't have money to go to America. Okay. This is a typical cottage from 19th century. Uh, you know, nothing luxurious, but they were, they were happy. They lived there like many people lived there, maybe, you know, three generations. Good. And now I'm getting to the point why. Why they decided to leave. So, what's in the picture? Do you know? In the picture is spinning wheel. Yes. So, maybe it's connected somehow. Yes, it is. Actually, people in Moravia uh, didn't have work. Uh, or the, their situation was different from the from, uh, situation in Bohemia. And um, people in Moravia, the majority, their work uh, was, they were weavers. But suddenly, Austria-Hungary Empire started to import the wool. So, what happened? The weavers lost the job. And because they weren't qualified for anything else, they became surplus and they didn't know what to do. So they were really forced to leave. So who uh, left the Czech lands? Cottagers and weavers, or cottagers who were weavers. Be and why? Because they didn't have a job. Uh, lack of freedom, as I said, Austria-Hungary Empire, that wasn't fun at all. We weren't free. There weren't political, uh, there, were, there wasn't political freedom, religious freedom. People wanted to live in, in, like, in a free way. They wanted, they were seeking for freedom. And, uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, Austria-Hungary oppression. Right. Why Texas? Very interesting question. Uh, so, basically, because of the land. Czech people, cottagers, they desired land where they could plant. Uh, they wanted to have animals. Uh, that was their dream. And here in Texas, there was quite a large amount of land, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's quite bigger than the Czech Republic. So, for them, as, it, as it's for me today, still, as well, uh, we can't believe how, how big it is, how spread it is. And they could afford uh, land uh, for a reasonable price. What I found, five, from five to ten dollars for an acre. <gasps> That's amazing. I would love to buy land for five dollars. <laughs> So, yeah, so two reasons. They didn't live in freedom and they could buy uh, land for almost nothing. No, I'm, well, it wasn't, of course, so easy, but uh, let's, we can put it like that. So, and the quality of land was also good for them. But one thing is important, not everybody was farmer, not everybody wanted to farm here. Uh, for some people, religious freedom was very important. And that was the main principal reason why they decided to leave. Uh, for example, Josef Leszka, this name is connected. He, he dispatched the first two groups in 1850s. He was the leader. Uh, yeah, because Czech people always need some leader. <laughs> uh, they want to, what they want to, Czech people like put responsibilities on someone else. That's, that's our thing. Okay, 
So why Texas? Because of the land. Assimilation, also important. Uh, you know, the years uh, went on, and after some time, Czech people started to uh, be friends with Americans. They didn't want to be with Germans, because they, they learned, yeah, Americans are quite okay, let's be friends with them. And they were inspired by American way of life, uh, so they started to run businesses. And they opened uh, black, blacksmith shops, or bakery shops, or buttery shops. Yeah, they wanted to make more money. <laughs> so, uh, that's I call it, my city's assimilation. That when you start to live somewhere, even though you are from a different country, after some time, you are so influenced by the way of, of life there that you actually become um, more, you, you are Americanized, we can call it like that. Uh, yeah, I put that also that uh, people started to get married with, uh, you know, for, for the, from the beginning they didn't want to get married with Americans, but then they said, okay, let's marry, <laughs> let's get married. So, and suddenly the culture started to be mixed, you know, Czech culture, American culture, uh, so I call it a mix of culture, or salad bowl, that you put everything in a bowl, and the result is mix. And Czech language, important. Fa one thing, or this is the thing I find really pity, that people here don't speak Czech anymore, or they, they say to me that yes, but then our conversation stops at jak se máš. <laughs> so, you know what I mean, like the, the language really uh, is not spoken as much right now. And also, what is important to mention, the language that people speak here, it's like the language 100 years back. Sometimes I don't even understand <laughs> what people mean here, because, uh, and it's also connected with the fact that I'm from Prague, that uh, the, the dialect is a bit different there. Uh, so this is really interesting, that the language uh, is like 100 years back, so I'm like back in past. <laughs> but uh, it's really pity. I would like to say this presentation in Czech right now, because it would be easier for me, but people uh, can't speak Czech here anymore, or some do, but as I say, maybe some phrases. And I'm really proud of this title, Czech Cultural Imprints in Texas. So what Czechs left here, or brought here? So, uh, yeah, this, this is actually interesting. Do you know that there is a saying, when there are two Czechs, there are three clubs? <laughs> yeah, Czechs fell in, or like they, love making clubs, they want to be together, <laughs> so when they arrived, they, um, they made some, you know, reading clubs, dancing clubs, music clubs, yeah, singing, that's the one thing that Czech people really love, singing somewhere at midnight, some, <laughs> you know, you are outside and you sing um, Czech songs, this is really nice, uh, so, Czech, actually Czech people brought it here. Even today you have some clubs and you are happy to meet others. So remember this is Czech, okay? We brought it here. <laughs> mm, yeah, koláče. So it's koláče, okay? I don't want to hear koláče, koláčes or something. <laughs> koláče, yeah. Czech people brought here koláče because the food, is different here. It's real. It is really. I know something about it. So they wanted to uh, do it like that. They wanted to feel like at home. Um, Czech. Um, what did I put there? Czech bakeries in West. Yeah. For example, village bakery, where I really the first time I entered the village bakery, I was really like at home. It's amazing. Like. Uh, the atmosphere there, I could see the Czech uh, writings, Czech title there, also that um, the Czech uh, saying, bez práce nejsou koláče, which means <laughs> if you don't uh, bake koláče, uh, no, 
Bez práce nejsou kovat. Yeah, if you... Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's difficult to translate something. Uh, yeah, so I was like at home, but I am 9,000 kilometers away. Now you have to convert to miles. So, <laughs> I, yeah, this is my third time in Texas, and I still don't understand miles, gallons, pounds. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I was actually thinking. That it's so good that we have but at least time the same, you know, like ours. <laughs> it would be so complicated, but even in the minutes were different. So, good. So, collages and Czech bakeries. Uh, Czech festivals, this is amazing. Really, I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying this, but when I go to West West, I am like at home. If someone showed me a picture from West West, I would say, yes, this is from some Moravia town in the Czech Republic. It's really like in Moravia. This is so amazing, people, that you, um, you maintain the Czech heritage, that it's so important for you, that you continue um, with Westfest. Or there are mar much more festivals. Uh, and this is also interesting. Czech Miss Contest. All right, so first of all, I would like to say that I don't really understand this whole Miss contest. I think you have Miss of everything. Every company, uh, every town, every city, every building, every school. <laughs> no. Like just um, one thing that I appreciate that the, the girls in Czech Miss, miss contest that they help uh, maintain the Czech heritage as well. It's really nice. They wear the, the uh, kroy, the costumes. So this is nice, but very American. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and yes, so this is a uh, Texas collage. Uh, we do uh, collage, as I said, and they are more round. Because like this is this this shape is like square. <laughs> so it's not collage. Collage is supposed to be wheel, remember? <laughs> so that's the assimilation, or that's the mix of culture, um, cultures, as I mentioned. Also, uh, you maybe this picture that's not so visible, but you put there uh, more dough and less of the filling, or how to say it. We do it, you know, vice versa, I would say. Less dough and more the filling. You should come to the Czech Republic, you should taste it. And also, here in Texas, which we might discuss if it's good or bad, but collage in Texas are definitely sweeter and bigger. Uh, but then it depends on everyone. Uh, and this is very funny. <laughs> Sausage collage. <laughs> so, uh, please, 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 that's not a Czech thing at all. <laughs> I don't know who started it, but it's, uh, it's different, it's weird for me. <laughs> But this is a stand, Czech stand with hot dogs. That's my favorite in Prague, by the way. Uh, so uh, I don't know, but why you call it collage? You know, <laughs> some misunderstanding, I think. I think it's really time that someone, you know, tells you that that's not collage at all. Uh, collage is supposed to be sweet, okay? But I assume it's quite good. I like it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, right, it's not collage. And one thing that I don't understand at all, <laughs> pivo cake. <laughs> cake uh, uh, of pivo, or, or what, or like beer, but pivo is beer in Czech. Right? So, um, I don't know actually, this is really different. We, I mean like, we drink beer sometimes, uh, but we don't put beer to the bread. 
or <laughs> or to the cake. So, but okay, you know, it's original. It's something that you can show to your friends. Look, Americans are funny. <laughs> they think that beer is for making cake. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the last picture that I wanted to show you. This is what I was talking about. If someone uh, showed me this picture, I would say, yeah, that's somewhere in Moravia. And that's what makes all this story amazing. As I posted on Facebook two years ago, it's uh, 130 years ago, or it's been 130 years when everything started, and you still keep the Czech heritage, Czech culture, even though there is Atlantic Ocean between the two continents. And that is amazing. It's quite moving, actually. And one thing that is uh, sad, that people here are more proud of their Czech ancestors than people in the Czech Republic. <laughs> Czechs are not proud. I don't know why, because we are quite good. <laughs> We are a small country, but we are good. But we are, we are not so, so proud. But people here are proud. They want to continue. They want that their children and their grandchildren don't forget about their ancestors. And that's amazing. OK. So we did it. We made it to the end. <laughs> I hope you survived my English. <laughs> Uh, and now the important part. Do you want to read my thesis? <laughs> okay, I, I have uh, some. I have to tell you something. The first two chapters of my thesis are rather theoretical, so don't read them. Okay, <laughs> that's not that, that, that's not the funny part. Or if you. Uh, struggle falling uh, falling asleep, then read the first two chapters. <laughs> it depends on your mood. But anyway, uh, I have website www. Uh, Alice Lunakova. <laughs> so like my name and my last name. Yes, A. Like Alice in Wonderland, okay, so my name is Alice. <laughs> and then uh, L U N A K O V A dot me. Like me. It's quite original. I'm quite proud of the website. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Alice Lunakova dot me. I forgot something. Oh, I have to do it now. Because we have to go back. Or oh, no, I will I will show you. So and we will see if it's gonna work. Doesn't work. So that's the funny part, you know. I have to improvise. Uh, so if you go to the website. Uh, you will see many pictures. So go to the picture uh, where it's written the checks in Texas as my bachelor thesis. There is a picture like that. <laughs> I'm, look I'm looking somewhere there. <laughs> Remember this picture? <laughs> but I have long, long hair there, so it's still me. And you will click on it, and you can find my thesis. Okay, so go to the website, and you can uh, you can read it. You can see the pictures. This is the good part. Everyone who who has the thesis in the hands, um, they go immediately to the back where the pictures are. I'm like, okay, but read the text. <laughs> so uh, I hope you will find it. And now the very, very last part. Um, I am sure you know chicken dance. <laughs> so I hope it will work. Yeah, this is 
Czech version, you know, you will hear. So, this is uh, actually for children. So, if there are some Czech people, they are laughing right now. Um, it's so funny. It's, it's really for small children. So, I feel like. University and I am playing song for five years old children. <laughs> so I think this was a good end. I would like to say thank you. It's really amazing that you all came here. It means much for me. I will never forget it. That's really something uh, for all my life, this experience. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I think we have what time for one more question. Uh, 
Okay. Well, actually, I would just like to know who all here has checked your attention. Oh, that's a great one to end on. Stand up if you have check your